Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for once again joining me for tea time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. You know, I love putting those two together. Thing that zing, that zing and bergamot. I love bergamot. Anyways. So I hope you're hanging out with me, having some tea, coffee, liquor, whatever it is. Hanging out this morning here in sunny South Florida. You might be on the other side of the world. Maybe it's nighttime. I don't know. But I do appreciate you taking your time to hang out with me. All right. Um, we're getting close to that 30,000 mark. I think we're about 1,000 subscribers off. So if you're not a subscriber yet, please do so. All right. Go and subscribe. Click the little button over here so you can be notified whenever I go live or if I come out with a new video or whatnot. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it, even a little bit. If you hate it, give it a thumbs down. I'm okay with that also. So today we're gonna to be talking about photography basics and no chimping allowed. No chimping, guys. No chimping. Um, you see all the time out there, you see people are constantly taking a picture and then looking at the back, taking a picture and looking at the back. And that's kind of changed a little bit now that we have the WYSIWYG OVF, which is called an EVF, right? So your electronic viewfinder shows you exactly what you're gonna capture before you capture it. So now people can chimp without even anyone knowing about it, right? That doesn't breed good photographers. But before I get into that, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded my ebook, all right, go over to jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. 10 tips at making tack sharp images. There's something there for amateurs, pro ams, and of course, professionals. You're gonna get a little bit of something out of it. And it's free, guys. It is free. Go check it out. Go download it. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. So today I want to tell you why I use this camera. You see this? I don't know. It's going to keep on tracking my eyes because it is a Canon. It doesn't want to let go of my eyes. But anyways, I'll go like this. You see this camera? This is a Minolta SRT 102. All right. Um, I've shot this camera since I was probably about 20 years old. And that's a lot of years ago, maybe 30. Shh. Shh. Anyways. Um, it's been a lot of years and I still use this camera to do fine artwork, okay? My fine art photography. I'll use this camera in comparison to using a 1D or a 5D or any of the other 10, 15 cameras that I have over there. Why is that? Number one, I like the grain of film, a real film camera. But number two, more importantly, it allows me to slow down and think about my shot instead of motoring through tens, hundreds, thousands of images. And then later on in post-production, I have to sit there and go through them all, okay? This allows me to be more thoughtful. Do you love this lens? What do we got here? This is a 50, I think it's a 1.7, I believe. Yeah, look at that. A little 50, 1.7, a tack. When I say tack, tack sharp, all right? And then if I need to, I could throw on one of these. All right, this is, I think goes to 205, I believe. Yep, this is the 75 to 205. This is a 3.8, F3.8. But look at this. It's literally built like a brick house. I mean, solid metal. And even the caps on these things are all metal, all right? It's not like the junk that we see today, okay? These lenses will last forever as long as you take care of them and they don't get mold in them or anything, okay? Really amazing, heavy duty. I mean, really heavy duty lens. You can actually hit someone over the head with this and then strap it back on and start using it. Not that you would do that or I ever did that. Maybe a couple of times. Anyways, I love this camera. Absolutely love it. So I do fine artwork. Besides my professional work that I do commercial photography that you guys know all about, but I do fine artwork. And I will show my work. Matter of fact, you can see this in the back. You see this, guys? I'm gonna hold it up. You're probably not gonna be able to see it. Will you see it? Does it actually work? Can you, let me see, I got some glare here. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's gonna work. But anyway, so this is like one of my pieces, okay? This is one of the, the items that I show when I go and show my work in the gallery. And I absolutely love this chair, but it's just got so much just intricate, just 
patina over it. Absolutely, absolutely love it. This one right here is something that I keep in studio. I absolutely love it. I always keep a copy for myself. Normally, like this one, I do one of 100. So I only do 100 of any of them. This one, I think we've got to, I think it's about 65 sold so far of these. But what I'll do is I will show my work at a gallery or actually multiple galleries and uh, I will hang a bunch of my work you'll see all of them are 60 by 40 okay 60 by 40 massive like this prints and uh, they're all black and white and I would say more than 50 percent probably more like 75 percent are shot with an old camera like this that are on film okay but in comparison to printing these the new school way on a printer blowing ink, no, these are all chemically printed at 60 by 40. So they will last a really long time and I just like the look of it, okay? Besides not only liking the look of film and it allows me to pick the film, pick the grain, pick the type of grain that I want. Do I want it loose? Do I want it tight? Do I want small grain? Do I want large grain? What do I want for the session that I'm doing or the shoot? Okay. I like being able to do that. But like I said, it allows me to slow down. When I'm about ready to take a picture, I have to adjust everything on the camera manually. All right. Slow everything down, get everything right. And when I click that shutter, that's it. I cannot look on the back. There's no flippy. There's no touch nothing. There's nowhere to see if it came out right or not. You just have to know photography. You have to be a photographer, all right? So I think that it is very important that even if you are a photographer that's been shooting for the last five, six years, that has never shot film, try shooting some film, okay? It's definitely a means to really hone your art. Because remember, you have ISO, you have your shutter speed, you have your f-stop. You're controlling everything manually, setting it all up, and when you pull the trigger, when you first start, you're gonna end up getting pure white images or maybe pure black images because you got it wrong, okay? The Trinity was set up wrong. But as you know how to do it, you're going to get better as a digital photographer just simply knowing Okay, knowing what the camera is doing and what you need to do to be able to change it. Now back to the sales numbers that I was gonna tell you about. Let me switch my screen over. As we can see here, this is the quantity of total shipment of interchangeable lenses or DSCs worldwide. 2018, 2019, and 2020. That's up to current. The current figure is up to August 2020. And look at this. I mean, this is absolutely abysmal. I mean, if we look right around March, April of two years ago, we're seeing about, let's call it 1.1 million in sales. Whereas down here, we're all the way down to probably maybe right around 300,000 interchangeable lens camera sales. I mean, absolutely abysmal. We can just see how it's just plummeting. And I really believe that this would be the case even if it wasn't for coronavirus. Cameras have been on a downward spiral for years, absolutely years. Ever since we've seen camera phones that have just done an amazing job at taking those snapshots, camera sales have not done well, like we can see ever since. Now we're always talking about Canon and Sony and Nikon and Olympus, Panasonic, Fujifilm and everyone else, right? We're always talking about the numbers and how sales are doing and who's going to do well and who's gonna be out of the market. Um, some of the data that I was going through when I was kind of milling through all this is that we found that Canon, the company sales are just cut. They're literally doing 25% of their sales in comparison to years past, okay? Abysmal. Whereas if we take a look at Sony, their company as a whole is four times bigger in value than it was three, four years ago. Matter of fact, let me see, let me bring this up. There we go. All right, so check this out. This is Sony over here back in 2000, 17. Their value, let's call it, or their stock value was $28 a share. As of today, 
we're at $86.41 a share. We're talking four times the value in comparison to Canon, who's just literally in the basement at this time, okay? There's a big, big disparity between the two. And that's why I've always said, there's been some people that says, oh, Sony, you know, they're gonna get rid of their cameras. And the bottom line here, guys, is there's no reason for them to get rid of cameras. I hear it all the time. Oh, you know, I don't think that they're gonna be around because they are a technology company. They're not really a photography company. But that's the point, guys. That is the point. Kind of going round robin to this, okay? Where Canon is more of a physical company that, yeah, they make printers, they make cameras, okay? Sony makes these, but they also make electronics. They make ICs, they make components, all right? That puts them in a much better place than Canon will ever be, all right? That being said, just looking at Moore's Law, for example, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Moore's Law, but Gordon Moore back in, I think it's 65, 1965, said, listen, I believe that every year going forward, the number of components on an IC, an integrated circuit, will double, okay? In 1975, 10 years later, a decade later, he revised this to say every two years, the number of components on an IC will double, every two years. Now, he came up with this number with no empirical evidence, he just came up with this number, just knowing the industry, knowing what's going on, knowing the trends. And this has proved to be the case ever since. Even today in 2020, manufacturers and companies use Moore's Law as a basis for their semiconductor industry, all right? This has been a long-term means of planning and setting targets so that their research and development people are actually on target, let's say, which has come to be basically a self-fulfilling prophecy. Moore's Law. Law with no empirical data. Now, what this means is we're going to see the cameras all right, continuously go up in price and in spec going forward in perpetuity forever because they're no longer a unit that's a mechanical camera. You know, I call this an egg timer. You set it to whatever speed the shutter is going to move at, okay? You hit the button, fires off, and that's the end of it. These cameras were about two, 300 bucks, 400 bucks, but you had this camera for years. Why? Because like I said, it's an egg timer. There's nothing to it. It's hard like a brick, it doesn't break down. You have a little battery here you can like pull out, change the battery out for your light meter, <laughs> you know? And that's it, that's, that's all it's to it. All right, and your battery here lasts like two years few hundred dollars, guys, few hundred dollars. And when you want to make better pictures and you can afford better lenses, you know, you pick up more lenses. Lenses have always been everything. Lenses are for a lifetime. Bodies come and go like toilet paper. And now that we're in this technology age where all of the cameras now, instead of being like this, two, three, four hundred dollars, you're talking about two, three, four thousand dollars. And the problem is, is they're only around for six months to a year. And now, according to Moore's law, it's outdated. These aren't, right? These aren't. So I wanna to say to you guys, is if you haven't thought about this, put this into your pipe and smoke it, so to speak, and look at your photography in a different way. Slow down, okay? Possibly cover up your back panel. If you're shooting with an EVF, don't look through it because it is WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. It's not an OVF. All right, and see what you can produce. As you produce better and better pictures without chimping on the back, you will become a better photographer. You'll be able to go out, take a look and say, oh, this looks like about an ISO 800, maybe an F16 at a shutter speed of maybe 1 60th, okay? Just by looking around. Knowing these things gives you the ability to adjust your camera manually 
to get it to be exactly, get the image exactly how you want it. The depth of field, the brightness, the contrast. Do you want to plug your darks? Do you want to blow out your highlights? How much depth of field do you need or want? Right? It gives you a means to really do photography on a basic level. No chimping allowed, like I said, no chimping allowed. So we're going to see cameras get better and better and better as time goes by. As those components on the ICs double upon double upon double every two years. Okay, this is absolutely the fact. Don't be tempted by all of these gold coins and silver coins and jewels that we see with these new bodies, okay? Spend your money, instead of on a brand new body, spend your money on glass or spend your money on education. That's the best thing that you can do today, all right? There's going to be the next camera, the next greatest camera, and the next greatest camera every single six months to a year, two years at most, for the most part, all right? Try not to get caught up in it. And like I said, try to slow down. Figure out what you're doing, okay? And stop spraying and praying and chimping on the back of your camera. And then later on in post-production, you're having to go through hundreds, maybe thousands of images to pull out those few good ones that you shot while you're spraying and praying. Just get it right. Get it right in camera. One other thing that I want to give you is that when we shoot these, we always made sure that what was in the frame is exactly what we wanted, okay? We framed it beforehand, either with our feet or with the lens, okay? If you have a telephoto. Put the subject in the frame exactly how you want it. Do not crop in later in post-production. This is like a tip number 99 for you guys. Why is that? If you're shooting, for example, a 30 megapixel sensor, and if you have to crop in, let's say 200% to get closer to the model, your 30 megapixels just turn into 15 megapixels really quickly, right? So bear that in mind. Take your shot, slow down, and get exactly what you want in the shot, and you will end up with a much better picture, a higher resolution picture, simply better. And I guess that goes back to my 10 tips at making tack sharp images, like I said. Go download it. It's free. Head over to jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Grab my ebook. Once again, it's free. Pick it up. Read through it. There's a lot of good tips in there. So anyways, guys, I hope you got something out of this. I had a lot of fun showing you this camera. I would open it up, but I actually have some film that I'm working on in here right now. Um, and some of my fine artwork. I have so many that are piled up over here. But if you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. That would be absolutely stellar. Don't forget also to subscribe to the channel. That is very, very helpful. We're trying to get to that 30,000 mark. We got a thousand left, all right? Might take a little while, but you never know, all right? I need you. Please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of good stuff on here. It's probably like 400 plus, probably getting close to 500 videos. And there's a lot of good people. If you're here and you're brand new, look in the comments of every single video. Just look at them, read them. You'll see that there's no trolls. This channel is a no troll channel. There is no trolls. All wonderful people that are willing and able to help. So I feel very blessed about that. Um, also, when we're done discussing this in the comment area below this video, go over to community.jchristina.com. Once again, community.jchristina.com. It is a free Discord server, a creative Discord server that I created for both of us, all right? So we can hang out, chat. I'm in there all the time, and there's a lot of really smart people over there also. So go check it out. And if you are subscribed, click this little bell notification over here, this button. If you click that little bell icon, what will happen is, is every time I go live or if I come out with a new video, you'll be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me. Also, use promo code YT20 at checkout. Once again, if you're a subscriber and you're watching this, YT20 promo code at checkout, and you'll get 20% off everything 
that's in your shopping cart. So that's it guys, I'm out of here for yet another vlog. I'm gonna finish my tea. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.